What's your number one hack for the holiday season? Everybody listening right now is quant, conversions. This time of year, get it out. This is your version of Breaking Bad. Yes. We're focused in the millennial demographic. The very next thing you should think about is that- Yeah, you can't forget about SEO. Uh, the trick is the relationship with the carriers, right? I'm Mac. I'm Severe. And, and this, this is Hacking, Hacking the, the Holidays. holidays. Hacking the Holidays podcast miniseries is produced and brought to you by VaynerMedia and Shopify Plus to help you hack the holidays. Visit us on the web at vaynermedia.com slash e-commerce. Thank you, listeners, for joining us. Uh, we want to talk about uh, the upcoming holidays and see how, you know, what we can get to. We have a lot of great guests lined up uh, to join us uh, in, in the upcoming episodes, uh, so binge on and, and download everything and listen on a, anywhere that you can get your hands on our podcast. Uh, this is going to be a really exciting six part series. We have, we lucked out and we're able to get some interesting people. So, um, there's going to be golden nuggets throughout. I think. Awesome. So we're, we're on, uh, we're recording this on November 14th. We're super close to black Friday, right? Too close. It's, very, it's, it's very getting, close. It's getting scary. Yeah. Um, so, what, what are the basics? Can we still affect and uh, uh, should you have covered by now? So let's talk, talk about it from a kind of a Shopify versus uh, sure. Shopify Plus, maybe yep. the distinction between those two, because I've heard about Shopify. A lot of our listeners have heard about Shopify, but what is Shopify Plus? How, why is it so different? And then we can tackle some of the other challenge channels. Yeah, good question. I mean, specifically um, in the context of Black Friday, Cyber Monday in the holiday season, Shopify Plus starts to be really different and differentiate itself through some some of the tools that are used on Plus only. Uh, so Launchpad is something that comes to mind immediately. Um, Launchpad is a Plus specific tool. Um, there, when I say Plus, I mean like Shopify Plus versus regular Shopify. That's kind of the distinction to make. Um, everyone, you know, if you're an entrepreneur and you have a business or you sell online, you probably know what Shopify is. You might not know what Shopify Plus is, and you might not know what's the difference. Um, so yeah, I, I'll, I'll touch on that too. But the first and most relevant way, yeah, Launchpad. Launchpad is a way where you can schedule flash sales through your Shopify Plus store. So it actually allows merchants in real time to monitor and track their sales, uh, to choose what products are going on sale, uh, and then know how many have sold, uh, what's out of stock, uh, and gives them a dashboard to look through it as this sale happens, which is really important. You know, this holiday season, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, you can't not track your sales. It's just what you do. Um, Shopify and Shopify Plus uh, are different, differentiated for like one main reason. Shopify Plus is meant for enterprise style merchants. I mean, we call it it's high volume, higher value merchants to the ecosystem. People who are selling, you know, usually over a million dollars or uh, at least um, at least around that mark and up um, all the way to hundreds of millions of dollars on our, on our high scale. So um, it's just, it becomes more, the, the real benefits of plus become more evident at that million dollar mark. Uh, and the two big ways to conceptualize what pl what's different about Shopify Plus, actually there's three ways. What's different about Shopify Plus from Shopify Core or Shopify.com uh, is that uh, there's added level of support and service. You a launch manager, someone who's, whose job is to just launch your stores, to help you make sure you have your ducks in a row, get everything aligned, launch your store on Shopify Plus. Uh, and your merchant success manager. This is someone who's who knows your email address, who you have their email address, maybe their phone number, who they're like a strategic advisor for your store. They tell you what apps oh, to great. use, uh, which is yeah, really important for someone. Yep. Um, and especially, you know, that that would be a person uh, as a go-to. You can you can call up and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking of doing um, for the upcoming holidays, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, and they can help you through that process. Or you want to connect, bring on, let's say, loyalty marketing to your website. That's a, that's a good go-to person 100%. to have there. Yeah, and, and not only that, but they're going to know which app to use. Like they're going to know what's, which Shopify uh, plugin is the best for that type of thing that you're doing. So, you know, they have experience. They've worked with hundreds of other stores in the past. That's where a merchant success manager really plays a beneficial role. Um, and then, so that's on the support side, the two other sides of the functionality. You simply have more functionality. I mentioned Launchpad already. There's a wholesale channel that's exclusive to Shopify Plus. You can just sell wholesale native to Shopify Plus, wow. uh, which is pretty big. I mean, that was just launched, I think, six months ago. Uh, and since then, we've seen like a tremendous that's growth. That's pretty powerful. Uh, actually, if, you, if you're thinking of, because uh, a lot of businesses are direct to consumer and they just don't think about kind of the, a wholesale channel that they could introduce mm -hmm. uh, that that could be a completely a different channel for them. 
And the possibility of that. Yeah, it's it's an it's opening new concepts for entrepreneurs. You know, as people start their business thinking, I'm going to sell directly to individual people, suddenly you have a platform, you have, a, you have an area that enables you to start thinking of selling differently. Uh, and that's really what's, I think it's what's at the core of Shopify and Shopify Plus and the mentality that surrounds it is just opening up ideas and different pathways for different entrepreneurs. I mean, one thing that I really, uh, I've worked with so many different e-commerce platforms. What, what I really like about the Shopify model is that there's a lot of things that's uh, taken out, like worries that I have to worry about and get anxious about, especially during these times. Uh, like, are my servers gonna be up, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a real question. Is my site going to be up when, when all this traffic comes to it? Because consumers are expecting to spend. They, they, are, they are ready and they have their credit card in hand. They show up to your site and, and, and your marketing is working like gangbusters. Your email marketing is working, social media is working, and people show up and there's no site. Yep, and that's, and that's the, 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 the real uh, key factor of a platform. I mean, if you're gonna sell something, I think you told me earlier before we kind of turn on the, the, the microphones, but like your first thing that you should consider when you're opening a store is just keeping it online. I mean, yep. Like let's make sure it's up. Yeah. Uh, and then from then everything else kind of falls into place. Yeah. Um, that's what Shopify Plus is about. I mean, it's, it's reliable, 99.99% uptime. And, and, and people choose the platform because they don't want to have to have their own server farms. They don't want to think about, you know, calling your server at three o'clock in the morning and thinking like, add more, you know, uh, my site's crashed, I'm down, my biggest sale, of the, my biggest day of the year, and your website's not even working, and that's not, that's not going to work. If, if your site went down on Black Friday, there's no other Black Friday until next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. It's just you're, what you're, they you're call done. one Black Friday. Yeah, that's it, that's it, you're done, you know, <laughs> after that. It doesn't matter how genius your your marketing plans are. If the technical side of things, if the servers are not up, if your site is not up, it doesn't matter what you had what media budget you had planned. Like operationally you should be thinking about getting keeping that site up, you know. I mean, uh, looking at the numbers from like 2016, uh, on that during the holiday season, US businesses e-commerce sales were like 80 billion dollars. They they grew about uh, 17% year wow. over year. And, and what, another indicator that uh, that's the next topic I want to touch on is, um, 44%, there was 44% growth in mobile, mobile site sales. Wow. That's huge number. That's a, that's not a 10, 15%. That's 44% increase in mobile, uh, mobile device, you know, yeah. through, you know, you're purchasing through here while you're waiting in line at your favorite retail store to open for Black 100%. Friday sale. People you know? are just more comfortable buying on, on their phone now. Yeah. I mean, I just there's an article, a Shopify merchant, Houdinki, they sold a watch Rolex for $172,000 through Apple Pay on their yeah. mobile store. Like, wow. can you like, can you imagine that? that? Imagine even two years ago saying that out loud, people would think that you're uh, like, you know, crazy. Now it's just, it's just the norm. It's, you have to be mobile first. No, but I've come across so many e-com sites that uh, may look okay on a desktop, but when it comes to uh, when it comes to mobile and you're trying to access them on your mobile iPhone or Samsung or whatever, uh, you have to still pinch and zoom. Like how many people are going to tolerate that and how many people are going to be that patient? And then when we wonder about, we, lo we look at, as, as business owners, we look at Google Analytics and go like, oh, the, the mobile conversion rate is like 50% of desktop conversion. It's not converting. Yeah, do you have a mobile responsive site? <laughs> Let's start there, right? Yeah. Have you made your site to convert on mobile? Because if yeah. it hasn't, it's not going to. I mean, there are some other stats that why it may, in 2017, and, and we're getting very close to 2018 now, not having a mobile responsive site hurts you quite a, quite a bit. 89% of emails get checked on mobile devices. They're, they're not checked on desktop. So when, that per, when you're sending that promo and you say shop now and people are clicking that, they're touching that on... A, on, on a mobile device and coming to your site and your site is not mobile, you're losing, and if you're wondering about why is email revenue, email campaign revenue or email channel revenue down, that's a good place to look. Yep, 100%. I think we're, you know, we're, uh, the, the mobile responsive, so we're gonna have to talk to Gary about this when he's on the episode. I think the, the monthly wine club uh, website, I don't know if that's responsive on mobiles yet, so we need yeah. to, uh, to change that around. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. When, uh, I mean, it's not just, it's not just email. Email is such an important vehicle for e-commerce, uh, sites, but nowadays it's not just for email marketing. Email is also for, you load it up into social media channels. You, you can load it up into, uh, Google and you could do, not only can do 
target those uh, emailable customers directly on all those other platforms, but you can also uh, find lookalike audiences of your best customers, people who look like these customers that you have in order to market to them also. Interesting, yeah, t yeah. tell me a little bit more about that. What, what do you mean, like, how, how, how can you find who, who is similar to your existing customer base? So on, when, when you load the stuff up, and we have folks like Lee Elliott coming up and, and uh, driving traffic with, uh, with Mark from Shopify, we will talk to them about the specifics of it. But what you can do is, if, let's say if you have 10,000 email addresses or 100,000 email addresses in your database, the old school thing is you just load it up into MailChimp or whatever your favorite uh, email service provider is. You put a campaign together, you can segment it, and then you can send it out, right? But you can take the same list and you can load it up into, into Facebook to identify two things. One is I want to find my customers on Facebook so I can send them uh, a targeted ad. So when they are looking at their Facebook uh, status update, they can see my ad in there too, to, so that you can reach your customers in case uh, your inbox deliverability or, or people, your response rate from open rate perspective, people are not opening your emails for whatever reason, you could reach out to them that way. Huh. That's one. The other way you, you can do that is also, these are my 10,000 out of 100,000. These are my 10,000 best customers that I have in my file. You can take those 10,000 people and you can, you can look within, uh, uh, within Facebook, for example, to find lookalike audiences, people who act, behave, purchase, geography, whatever you like. You, know, you, could, you could actually carve it out and see how, what segments you want to create, and then you can test those segments out of, wow. of new audiences that you want to uh, approach, people who act and behave similar to the people that you have, your 10,000 best people you have in your database. That's amazing. Sabir, you're, you're, you're blowing my mind a little bit. And uh, <laughs> why don't you tell me a little bit about, too, I, I, I thought it was really cool. You mentioned how, uh, you know, it's not just Black Friday, Cyber Monday. There's, there's kind of many different dates and different layers to the holiday season. Can you go over what those dates were? You had some new ones that I'd never heard of. Okay. So Thanksgiving this year is November 23rd. So uh, b having run uh, e-commerce companies, that's an early, that's an early, uh, that's a very early Thanksgiving in the U.S. So um, that, that means that a lot of things that happen, like Cyber Monday, happens in November, doesn't happen in December, right? So from, from a planning perspective, you should think about that, like you're going to have pretty powerful days, like Thanksgiving week, you're going to have Thanksgiving Day, you ha you're going to have Black Friday, you will have Black Friday weekend, you have Cyber Monday, and Cyber Week, almost all, almost all of it in November. And in December, then you have uh, some of the other days that you may not have heard of, like Green Monday is a very popular e-com holiday. Green Monday. Green Monday. Cool. What is that? This was coined by, I believe, uh, you can look in Wik Wikipedia and, and, and take a look at that. It was coined by eBay, and they, they ran this uh, campaign like two weeks after Cyber Monday. And it worked like gangbusters. Uh, back in the day, like in, in early days of e-com. And um, so the other internet retailers found that to be an opportunity for them to actually reach out there and reach out to the, to the customers with a special offer. And typically, typically what I see is a repeat of either Black Friday or Cyber Monday with, with some kind of twist uh, that it gives them an, another reason for consumers to come back for the last minute shoppers, people sure. who have been procrastinating and not buying uh, close enough so that it gives them an, another reason to uh, to get their Black Friday deals on that day, you know, so it's it's another uh, pretty big day. It tends to be um, like anywhere from sixty to seventy percent of Cyber Monday, so which is a pretty big yeah, day. Yeah, that's significant. It's I, a significant day. I mean, this whole this whole season. I mean, I, I I was talking to a merchant the other day. He said that forty percent, forty five percent of his annual sales goals are within these 40 days. Yep. You know, or less than that actually. Yeah, less, like you know, 30 e whatever. Ecom sales are like 20 days because okay. of <laughs> okay. because of UPS, FedEx delivering that package to your loved ones so that the package gets there. We'll talk about like shipping days and how that affects it and we'll get into the logistics of it when we get to the operations episode. Interesting. Also, okay. uh, and and then there is free shipping day this year. Free shipping day uh, is um, is scheduled to be December 15th. Uh, so that on that day, all the internet retailers basically offer up uh, an equivalent of like free standard shipping. Some of them do free expedited shipping on that day, uh, and the consumers come have come to expect that to happen. So as as an e-commerce uh, retailer, you should think about that. You should make sure that you're you, you are planning for it. You're putting the right media budget behind it. You're putting the doing all the right things that you're doing with. Um, 
uh, like your campaigns, all these dates are very critical, and you really need to make sure that uh, your your everything, all your firepower is kind of from a media standpoint, from your promotional standpoint, all your merchandise, your inventory is targeted for these key days because you want to maximize that. The other days could be lull. You know, it's okay. It's come to you. Uh, you know, it's expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but you you can man even manage through that if if you're in a business where uh, inventory is scarce and and the consumers know that if they don't buy it now at this better price, they're not gonna find it on discount when it's 40% off or 60% off for Black Friday. Yep. Uh, so people will end up taking that up as soon as the pro product hits. So think of like a uh, special holiday exclusive fashion line, right? That's gonna go very quickly if, if you're a hot fashion brand, you know? Uh, so people are not gonna wait for a discount to, to buy that because they know that, especially if they know that they're a regular average size, that's gonna go. Like for women, it might be medium. For men, pants, it may be 36 by 30, right? Could be an average size. Now, so that you wanna, you wanna buy those things out. I mean, especially if there are things like iPhone is coming out during that holiday season at whatever, you know? That kind of stuff, you really need to, you can leverage that to your benefit and maybe even launch it not on Black Friday, launch it after. Interesting. To, to kind of get your more margin out of that. Yeah, I love the idea of a free shipping or a last shipping day. Um, I think this, like, it's publicized. I mean, every merchant knows about it. Every every online business has a day where it's the last day they can ship something. Uh, and it's funny, I, when I was a guru, I, I used to work uh, support for Shopify uh, years ago, and there was always a lull. You know, it was busy, busy, busy. We're, we're jammed on the phones. And then like five days before Christmas happens, it just goes silent. And that's because <laughs> like not, well, we're not shipping anymore. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. There's, we can't. It's not going to get there in time. So no one's buying anything. Uh, and yeah, have, publicizing that day, getting getting the word out there, uh, being in front of your audience saying, listen, this is the last time you can buy before Christmas. Um, so get your orders in now and giving it a little incentive. It, it makes sense. So actually, uh, that's that's an interesting point because this year, uh, Christmas is on Monday. December 25th is Monday, right? So that means in the US, there are Saturday deliveries. So 23rd is your very last day to deliver your goods. So if from there, if you think about uh, UPS ground, for example, or FedEx ground, that takes about five to seven days for majority of the US, right? Um, so when you, when you think about that, you have to think about how do we utilize that so that the last uh, shipping day to guarantee, for guaranteed Christmas delivery for UPS ground would be like five days before, on average, let's say, mm -hmm. right? Five days before for most of the United States. Um, and then what do you do? Okay, so that day comes and it goes, goes away. So start counting from the 23rd, right? Don't count from 25th. Saturday is the last day for delivery. So from 23rd, start counting minus five, right? So uh, you've seen a, a lot of retailers do a great job of that. They'll say December 17 or 18, by noontime, if you place your order, uh, free shipping, ground shipping, we can still deliver it for, uh, for, for most of the United States uh, by, by Christmas delivery. So we can guarantee that. But once that date comes and goes, what do you do? The very next thing you should think about is the two-day shipping option. There are some, like FedEx, I believe, offers three-day select. You could do three-day option, you could do two-day option, and then you could do like next day priority. I'm not saying for you to offer that as a, as a free, free offer. You can actually put, put the premium on it and ask people, people who are procrastinating for the last very second, the option is available for $20 shipping, you could ship that order out to them mm. next day so that by Thursday, if they place their order, they can still get it by Saturday. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm curious, lastly, I know we're, we're, we're almost wrapping up here, but, I'm, but I wanna ask you, what, um, who's doing it well? Like, are, are there any brands that you see out there, any, any online stores uh, in, in the enterprise space that are doing the holidays perfectly that you kind of admire that someone who's listening to this podcast can go and creep their social media and see exactly what they're doing and get some ideas from. Okay. Um, so number one on that list is because it is, is an exact science and some art is Amazon, obviously, you know, that's that they're at the forefront of it. They have done an incredible job with, with prime and prime delivery and prime one day and in, in certain markets and stuff. So they're, they're doing an exceptional job. Everyone kind of learns from them. Right, so that's kind of number one. Uh, some other companies, I would say it's a whole product category uh, of top fashion retailers. They have done a great job of, like they, they were uh, one of the initial um, categories that got into e-commerce and, and kind of embraced it, right? 
So by now they know that, where, and, and holidays is all about electronics and it's about fashion, right? You're either buying a fashion clothes and sweaters and stuff like that for your loved ones as gifts, yep. or, or you're buying electronics like your Xbox and PS3, 4, 5, 76, whatever <laughs> that's coming out, right? Um, uh, so you're buying those kind of tools like electronics, phones and stuff like that. So, um, th so those industries have done a great job. Like um, one company that you don't hear about, uh, they've been around kind of in the background is Newegg. Uh, they're kind of an electronics uh, retailer and, and um, their shipping has been incredible, right? When they tell me that it, you will get it in two days or one day, I, I get it. I mean, there is no, it's not like it got delayed or surprises. I love that. And yeah. You don't want, what you want, you, you want to be managing a level of disappointment with consumers, right? If you have disappointed them, you have failed, right? right? And, and you don't want to disappoint your consumers because you might lose them for the whole year, upcoming year. We just came, because today is November 14th and, and November 11th, there was Singles Day in, in a lot of the Asian markets. Singles Day, big day. Huge day, right? And that's by, let's like, uh, uh, coined by kind of Alibaba, and it's meant to be an equivalent of like Valentine's Day, with, but for pe celebrating people who single, are single. Single people deserve love too. Get a box of chocolates, chill in your, your, in your underwear and hang out. I mean, I, I, I feel that. Flowers and chocolate. <laughs> Let's talk about like Alibaba scored twenty five billion dollars on Singles Day. Twenty five billion. Billion. Oh JD.com <laughs> did nineteen billion during this period for an eleven Whoa. day period. So it's it's incredible if you if you count how much Alibaba did in one day. You can you can look at U S based e commerce companies that they do that number if they're lucky in the top ten. They, they might do it in a year. All year, yeah. All year. And that's And, that's and I'm still talking about rare. huge, huge brands, yeah. not not tiny brands. I wonder what I'm <laughs> like I'm wonder what Shopify is do, do gonna, gonna do on Black Friday. I mean it's gotta be something that yeah, that's that sounds it's tremendous. Staggering, right? I mean, just to kind of compare it, um, last year uh, Black Friday sales were around three point five billion dollars across uh, internet three hundred or five hundred retailers. Okay. Because it's kind of a long tail after like two hundred. Yep. Right. Um, so that's 3.5. And then if you combine like Alibaba and JD with Singles Day, they did combine on that one day, if you look at just that period, did about 35 billion in, in one day. And you compare that to 3.5 wow. billion across all, a, so a lot of the top US retailers. Why is, why, why is that? Why are they doing so much? so much volume is just because there's just more people in Asia? I mean, kind of a stupid question, but no, um, actually, uh, Alibaba reported that they had shoppers from 192 countries. So this is not just related to just China or Japan or, or Singapore or something like, you know, other countries it's, in that it's, region, it's, global. it's like global. Okay. And it's pretty global. Uh, it's getting to the U S it's not here yet, but it's getting to the U S also that, that would be very interesting. 2018. I, I look forward to that. I think, um, uh, I mean, this whole game of Amazon versus Walmart, I think um, the the player that's going to be prominent during uh, 2018 will be, it's not, it's not just Amazon versus the traditional U.S. retailers. It, it will also be Alibaba is going to be part of that. Oh, game. yeah. Though they're in there. There's a, one of the most popular, if not the most popular app on Shopify, I believe is called Oberlo. Um, oh, which yeah, yeah. You can automatically go to Alibaba, choose products, and then sell them throughout your own Shopify store. So you're basically wholesaling, um, but when the consumer buys the product, the Shopify store owner uh, doesn't actually hold any inventory. It's, it ships directly from Alibaba to the end customer. Uh, and that's, yeah, this is the most popular app on, on Shopify. Uh, it has a tremendous amount of signups, people who sign up just to use that app. Yeah. Um, and it still hasn't transitioned. Like a Shopify singles day still isn't a big, deal in Shopify internally or, or I mean it is, but it's not where it, it's not Black Friday, you know, yeah. it's not like we're, we're, we're talking about singles day all year. Um, I think uh, based on this trend, based on the hypothesis, based on what's happening is that in, in, yeah, in, in one year and two years, singles day is just going to be just as important in North America as Black Friday, Cyber Monday, which is going to be really, that's a, that's a big shift. Yep. I mean, I, I think that uh, we, we don't leverage Valentine's Day uh, enough from an e-commerce standpoint, I think during that month, I believe that in the next year or two, we, we will see Singles Day showing up with maybe a different name, possibly. You during know what? the month of February, because it gives a reason to do oh, something really? during that period for singles versus uh, 
people who celebrate val they're gonna, Valentine's. They're going to have it on the same day. So if you go to like a Valentine's Day like re dinner, you'll see like a single person sitting beside you at the next table. You know, that would be funny. There's like a competition <laughs> of healthy, like singles versus couples. Yep. Like yep. I mean, group fight. dating is a big thing too nowadays ah. with, with uh, younger crowd. So that's a, that's an interesting uh, angle to kind of explore that. Um, with that, actually, with, with that, we have a wrap-up question, Mac, and then uh, we should answer it, and then we'll sure. ask the guests the same question. What would you, what would be your number one hack for the holiday season? Oh, put me on the spot. Uh, my number one hack, <laughs> I think, I mean, you know, it's important to, 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 to have a value for your brand. I think retailers, people who are selling online, it's a busy time. There's pressure to sell, pressure to put big sales on. I, my piece of advice for merchants is to maintain your order value. I mean, don't, don't de uh, credit your brand too much. Keep your average order value high. Uh, and whether that means, you know, including like selling certain items, but also uh, getting more items in the cart, somehow manage to keep that order value the same as it's always been while increasing your volume, then you really win. My number one hack, it's all about data. You cannot hack if you don't have data. So it's data, data, data. Uh, you need to know your numbers before getting into the game during the holiday season. And as you are executing on those campaigns, consume that data as quickly as you can and then react to that data as quickly as you can to make adjustments very quickly. Don't beat yourself up. If something is not working, forget, forget about it. Move on to, to your next part of your strategy because the execution needs to be really fast and then you need to build up systems to collect the data, react to the data, and report the data as quickly as you can. So data is king. It's really, really important for you to get a handle over your data and pay attention to your data because it's going to tell you uh, quite a lot and that's how you're going to win. Thank you for listening to Hacking the Holidays podcast. We love all of our listeners and we'd like to hear your feedback. Please post your reviews, rating on iTunes, Google Play Store, Stitcher, or wherever you download your podcasts. Hit the like button. Encourage us to do more of this type of programming. Share with us your favorite hacks in the comments section of this podcast. And visit us on the web at vaynermedia.com forward slash e-commerce. Thanks, Sabir. Thank you.